Recent eruptions could teach us more about the birth and life of Yellowstone's geysers. Hydrothermal eruptions like the one at Biscuit Basin are more common than you might think in a national park, writes guest columnist Michael Poland. Shortly before 10 a.m. on July 23, a plume of hot water, mud and rock erupted from Black Diamond Pool in Yellowstone National Park's Biscuit Basin, just about two miles northwest of Old Faithful. No early warning was detected by monitoring instruments. Dramatic video posted to social media showed a plume of water and rock fragments soaring about 600 feet into the air as people scrambled for safety. The explosion severely damaged a nearby sidewalk, and the basin remains closed while geologists assess the activity. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Geologists who studied the deposits have noted that the rocks ejected by the explosion consisted of glacial material, sandstone and siltstone, and gravel directly beneath a thin layer of silica sinter on the surface. No rhyolite bedrock was found about 175 feet below the surface, based on drilling in the 1960s. This suggests that the explosion occurred at a much shallower depth and thus did not disturb the bedrock. This is not surprising, since hydrothermal vents are mostly shallow below the surface in Yellowstone. The explosion was mostly directed northeast toward the Firehole River, away from the sidewalk, and large boulders, some several feet across and weighing hundreds of pounds, fell in that direction. This coincidental direction may be the reason that no one standing on the sidewalk at the time was injured. Hydrothermal vents occur when liquid water boils and turns to steam in the shallow subsurface. This kind of transition happens all the time in established geyser systems, such as Old Faithful or Steamboat Geyser, where a well-defined conduit system allows the steam and hot liquid water to take an unobstructed path to the surface, resulting in a geyser eruption. However, when the liquid vapor mixture is confined to a sealed chamber with no apparent conduit system, the pressure from the expanding vapor bubbles eventually overcomes the strength of the rock, and an explosion occurs. In the case of Black Diamond Pool, the July 23rd explosion was likely caused by changes in a shallow subsurface reservoir of hot water. Silica precipitation can clog channels or pipes in the reservoir, causing steam to build up and build up pressure. Data collected by geologists from the debris from the explosion will provide more details about the actual conditions at the time of the incident. Hydrothermal explosions are more common than you might think in Yellowstone National Park. They are the most frequent but least damaging hazard compared to strong earthquakes, lava flows and domes, and caldera forming eruptions. On average, there are several hydrothermal explosions of varying sizes somewhere in Yellowstone National Park each year, often in remote areas that might go unnoticed.